Hello everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. You might recall that recently I picked up these 9 broken specky PCBs with the intention of repairing and refurbishing them all, putting them into cases and moving them on. Well good news, I've been cracking on with them and getting through them fairly rapidly. This one in particular though I thought I'd make a little short video about. As you can see, it is in issue 6A. It doesn't appear to have had any work done on it, the original capacitors are in and it has what I would call a good ULA ending in a 7, it's probably fine, but it's drawing 0.02 amps when I plug it in, so something's clearly wrong with our power circuit. Let's have a quick look at the schematic. The plus 9 volts here comes from the outer edge of the barrel from our DC power supply, and the 0 volt is connected to the um, inside of the barrel connector. 9 volts goes onto the input of our 7805 voltage regulator, which should produce a steady 5 volts DC output. Voltage regulators do tend to fail, so let's consider hypothetically how this thing could fail. The input could be shorted to the output, although I don't think I've seen that happen, but that would result in um, still a significant current draw, more than 0.02 amps, as we would have 9 volts going off to the rest of the power circuit. The input could short to ground, now this would create a short circuit from 9 volts all the way down to ground and my current limiting power supply would start limiting the current fairly rapidly uh, or your normal power supply would be very unhappy. Another possible total failure would be for a total open circuit within the 7805 and this would result in no current draw as I understand it. I think what's more likely is we're somewhere in between and the voltage out of our regulator will be much less than 5 volts. But before we jump in and start testing it and replacing it, let's take a look at this coil. The coil forms part of the oscillator which produces the plus 12 volt supply to the lower RAM and to the LM chip. These have also been known to fail so I'm going to check this one out too. Let's look at it in our diagram. Here's our 5 volts that should be coming in from the 7805 voltage regulator. We have the plus 9 volts or more coming from our power supply. This coil is basically just two lengths of wire wrapped around each other, so we should be able to test continuity and get no resistance from two of the sets of corners as highlighted here, and we should have no continuity from the opposite corners as highlighted here. Unfortunately, on this machine, I got continuity between all the corners regardless of which way I tested them. This made me think that the two wires had been shorted together by the insulation failing and I did pick up some wire so I could rewind it, I thought that would make an interesting video. Uh, but before I got into it, I looked a bit further down the line and tested TR4 which is a transistor in the power circuit which also fails regularly. So here I'm testing the continuity from the collector to the base of TR4 and I did get continuity, I got no resistance. So that implies that TR4 has shorted internally or our coil has shorted its windings. Let's check out TR4 in the schematic. Here it is, highlighted blue. We're suspicious that the collector is shorted to the base, as highlighted here, which would mean the 9 volts from our power supply is going through one winding of the coil, through our transistor, back up through the other winding, and through these resistors to the emitter of TR5. The oscillator that this circuit forms is almost certainly not oscillating, I also want to highlight the ground here, highlighted green, and also note that we definitely don't have 12 volts coming out of this circuit. All these things considered, I am going to guess that the base of TR5 is not getting any voltage, so TR5 is not conducting, which might offer us another explanation why we're not drawing any current, or not drawing much current at all. What do we want to do then? We either replace TR4 or we replace the coil. Speaking from experience, TR4 is the most likely candidate here and a lot easier to replace, so let's get it out and pop a new one in. Cutting the legs is an option, but I prefer to remove the solder from the joints and give it a wiggle while applying heat to free it up. I'm not totally sure that this transistor is broken, so I'm going to try and preserve it. Now that it's removed, I'm going to recheck continuity on the coil and Thankfully, I got the correct results. The coil is actually okay. Here's our broken transistor, ZTX650. We're going to replace it with a ZTX651. These are like for like, so we don't need to worry about reversing the orientation of it or anything like that. Now 
Now we're getting a bit closer to having a working power circuit, I'm just going to check the resistance from the power supply pins on the lower RAM to ground. I can't tell you exactly what these should be, I think it varies depending on the board that you're testing, but basically they shouldn't be close to zero. If they're close to zero, you're going to draw a lot of current and probably blow up more transistors. These results are looking good, so I feel confident that I can plug it in, see what sort of current draw we're getting now that we've replaced the transistor. I realised here that the DC uh, power socket was a bit loose, so I'm going to replace that later. The current draw was too low still, it wasn't zero, but there's still something wrong. Let's check the voltages on the regulator. We've got 9 volts in from our plug, that's good. The middle leg is ground, that should be zero, and the output should be 5 volts. We're getting 0 0.28 volts, so that thing needs to come out. We need to remove the heatsink in order to remove the regulator. And I have a new 7805 here that I'm going to put in place. I know that I could have put in a switching regulator, but you do lose a bit of heft to the machine when you lose the heatsink, and the machine getting warm is also a little bit authentic. I'm going to put a heatsink on the ULA anyway, so it should be protected from overheating, at least to some extent. Alright, let's give it a quick blast, see what it's doing now. Current draw is much more in the area that it should be. Um, I'm going to unplug it quite quickly though because the heatsink isn't attached. Definitely don't want to be running a 7805 with no heatsink on. With the heatsink reattached, let's check out the voltages that the lower RAM is receiving. Should be getting plus 5 on the lower right pin, we are. Plus 12 on the lower left and minus 5 on the upper left. Nice. Finally, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to replace the barrel connector. The one that's in there is loose and temperamental. So here's a new one, these cost basically nothing, so it's worthwhile replacing it if you're suspicious of the one that you have. Although there's quite a lot of solder on these joints, I find these are generally quite easy to remove, quite easy to fit, although you do need to be careful to make sure that it is flush to the board and straight, pointing out perpendicular from the back edge of the board. Yeah, that's looking good, it feels good, I gave it a waggle, uh, it didn't lose power, so I'm happy with that. Let's finish the refurb and build it up. Fast forward, we have new caps, we have a heatsink on the ULA, it has a new case with a new membrane, and we're going to start testing it now with some demos and some soak tests and things like that. Another Specky rescued. Thank you all for watching, stay tuned for more videos.